Welcome guys, please make sure you check out the video of the cutting of this jogger jumpsuit before you jump straight to this sewing video. So to start the sewing, I first of all bend by half then fold by one inch and I did that for both sides of the buttonhole line. Then I used one to overlap each other by half inch, after which I placed the back piece on the front piece. Then I'll be making a half inch stitch to join both on the shoulder line. By making those half inch stitches on the shoulder line, we've succeeded in joining the front and the back pieces together. Automatically, one part of the front piece would be one inch long, longer than the other part. And this is the only way the front and the back piece would be exactly the same shape and size. So if you check out the pattern drafting video, you will see where we did all those mathematics. So I'll be working on the neck. But before I start working on the neck, I need to pin down the buttonhole line. That is making sure one part is covering the other part. Because for a female attire, the buttonholes are always on the left part while the buttons are on the right part. While for a male, it is the other way around. So after pinning down with my pin, I will be able to fold the whole outfit into two. So I will be able to get my exact center points now when I fold. The next thing to do is to cut out the fabric we are using for the making of the Peter Pan collar. So you fold the fabric into two like that. So I'll be folding the black fabric into two then I'll be placing my piece on it, making sure the back is on the same line with the folded fabric. So the back needs to be on the same line with the folded fabric because the back piece is also folded into two. So both needs to be on the same line. That's just all you need for precautive measure. So after that, you just go straight to the cutting you cut through the shape of the neckline then after cutting you will determine where you want your Peter Pan collar to start from if you want it to start from the buttonhole line or the middle of the buttonhole line so after cutting out that shape like that I'll be determining how wide I want the Peter Pan collar to be and for this I'll be marking 3 inches all through because if I finish sewing I should be getting something in the range of 2 inches because half inch will be chopped off on both sides when I'm sewing. So I'll make sure my markings are closed so I can be able to get the curve I need. So after getting the curve, I'll make use of my scissors and just cut off. Now I'll make a curve on the front part because my collar will not start from the buttonhole line. It will start from like one inch before the buttonhole line. So I'll be making use of my pin to hold both pieces both fabric down because I don't want one to be wider than the other and then I'll go straight to the cutting process After cutting out the Peter Pan collar, you would also cut out a piece you use in turning it. So the Peter Pan collar will have a front and a back piece and you will place both right face facing right face, making sure both are exactly the same size and shape. Then you make a half inch stitch from the end like that, from the tip of the end. You make your half inch stitch all through to the tip of the other end. After preparing the collar, I will be notching the edge of the buttonhole like that. So I also notch the other edge of the buttonhole. I will notch the center of the collar itself. And after notching the center of the collar, I would also notch the center of the back piece of the fabric itself. And after doing all these notches, I will go straight to the fixing of the Peter Pan collar. 
So I will notch the back piece like that. Then I will go straight to the fixing. As you can see, I'm placing the collar and the back piece together on that notched point. And I'm also using a, a fabric to turn it. So that fabric I will just place on top and also pin it down. So I place the collar on the back piece, then I place the fabric on both. So I'll pin it down to the left. Then when I get to the notched part of the buttonhole line, I will use that to turn it to the other side. Then I'll also do the same to the right. I'll be cutting off the excesses. And mind you, you'd also be folding on the edge. So after cutting, you fold on the edge. So I'll do the same to the right side as well. I'll pin all three pieces down. That's the actual fabric, the color, and the piece I use in turning it. So I'll pin all three down to the edge. And when I get to the notched part of the buttonhole line, I'll use it to turn it as well. And I would also pin it down. And mind you, you'll be folding that piece you are using to turn on the edge as well. Then I'll make my half inch stitch all through. So you can see the Peter Pan collar is done. So these are the pieces I cut out to be exactly of the same shape of the ammo. Then I fold the edges of the other side. So I will show you how I will use it in turning the ammo. So I will just place it side by side like that. Then I will make a half inch stitch. After which I will turn it then sew on the edge. So I will do that for the left side and I would also do that for the right side. Following the same process sewing, turning and sewing on the edge. So after I finish doing that, I'll go straight to the joining of the half length to the down part, which is the trouser. So you could you would notice I, I have not stitched the buttonhole line and that is because I'll be joining it to the trouser separately. That is for the front because the front is actually a button down. So it is in form of a shirt. So the button down is up, is down up until the crotch point. By joining the upper and the trouser part, we have succeeded in finish working on the front part of this jumpsuit. So I will just overlap each other by one inch and you can see the button down is visible. So I'll be placing buttons on different positions like that up until the crouch point.
then I'll be showing you how we join the crotch points later. Then for the armhole, we've done turning the armhole inwards. You can see it. Did that for the left and also did that for the right side. Now for the back piece, I'll be joining the trouser for the back piece before I actually join it to the half length. So I join it on the crotch line like that. Then I'll be joining to the half length by half inch. I'll just place both right face facing right face and make a half inch stitch. On joining the half length to the trouser part as well, we've succeeded in joining the upper and the down part for both the front and the back piece. Next is to take our dart. So I'll fold it to half like that and I'll take my dart for the left side. So I fold into half and I'll also fold into half like that also and take my dart for the other side. Now I'm taking my dart after joining because if you take your dart before joining, that line might not be in alignment anymore. So the dart might just lead to a lot of irregularities. So for the front piece, I'll do the same also. I'll bend the buttonhole line, then I'll fold into two and take my dart. If you don't know how to take your dart, check out the pattern drafting. I clearly marked out where to stop when taking our dart, how many inches before the bust point and for the down part as well. So you know how to make your darts. You can decide to make yours before going further or you can decide to go further before making your dart. But I'll be showing you how to join the left to the right piece when you are making a button down jumpsuit. So you place the part that will be covering the other part on the sewing line. So it is on the sewing line of the other part. Just because when I finish sewing, I want that part to actually cover the sewing line. So after placing it on the sewing line, I'll be making use of pins to hold it down. So I'll hold it down up until the point I want to start my stitching. So when you are doing your pattern drafting, you have to actually know where you want your button down to end. So where your button down ends, Will actually be where your stitching would start from so I'll be placing that part to cover the other part then I'll do that up until the down part and I'll be arranging to make sure my crotch points are also in alignment because no matter what you do you have to join the crotch of the left to the crotch of the right so you can see that my crotch points are not perfectly in alignment but they are closely aligned because it is very important you join your crotch point correctly so after using my pins to hold it down I'll be making a stitch and I'll show you where that stitch will start from and where that stitch would also end because that is very important there's a way you would join the left to the right part and you have ripples you don't want ripples so when you join you want it to look like there was no joining at all and that is what I'm trying to explain right now. So you can see I'm I'm very careful when I'm using my pins to make the overlap because I want to be sure there are no rough edges, there are no folding. Now I'll make my stitch from the crotch point up until the point I want it to end, and that is that point. The edge of that point, I will make a stitch from the edge of that point, I'll make a half inch stitch to the crotch point like that. I brought the camera closer for you to see the stitches. So it started from the edge up until the crotch point. So I'll turn it over to the other side like that and you can see it. So I'll be removing my pins. So the pins are used in holding down the buttonhole line from the neck up until the crotch point. I'll be removing all those pins and I'll be showing you the next thing to do. And the next thing to do is actually to join the front and the back piece together. But before we start the joining of the front and the back piece, I'll show you the result of what we've done in general. That is joining the upper and the lower part of the front and also the back piece. So this is everything done for the front piece. So the collar, the buttonhole, lying down, the joining of the crotch point, the joining of the upper and the down part as well. That's that for the front piece. So for the back piece, 
it is just the joining of the upper and the down part so both is just almost the same but we'll be going straight to the joining of the front and the back now and to join the front and the back you'll be joining from the armhole line down up until the ankle part then you do that for the left and the right part then for the inner part you'll be joining from the crotch point down up until the ankle part as well and i'll be showing you you just properly place both together making sure the buttonhole lines are in alignment so you check everything properly you just don't jump into stitching like that so you check everything properly and this will be right face facing right face when you're making your stitches to start the stitching process you start from the armhole point make your stitch down up to until the ankle point then from the crotch point down up until the ankle point from that crotch point also down up until the ankle point for the other side from the armhole down up until the ankle point as well so you just follow your stitches like that then you go straight to the working of the ankle and that will be the fixing of the jugger band after stitching i did something funny i took the dart of the back piece and i didn't take the dart of the front piece that's the dart of the back side i took the dart of the back side and i didn't take the dart of the front side so that's the dart of the back side then when i turn it to the right face and mind you when i did that i didn't really know i hadn't taken the dart of the front side so these are all the stitches i made for the crotch point so you can see the crotch point is just a round stitch from the ankle down up until the crotch point round back to the other ankle then for the other side i just took the stitches from the armhole down up until the ankle point now you can see the ruffles so they were ruffles so i was trying to figure out why were they ruffles why were they ruffles up until i remember the the fact that i i did not take the dart for the front part so this is like a precautive measure when you finally join your upper and your down parts don't hesitate to take your dart because the minute you take your dart everything just falls into place everything just looks the way it is supposed to look so that is that so immediately i discovered that i went straight in and took the dart for the front piece you can see that every measurement counts so whatever you are doing when you give an allowance when you are actually doing your pattern drafting if you don't follow it when you are sewing it will always become a problem that's when you start um, reducing parts you're not supposed to reduce just to correct a mistake so you should always know that even uh, allowance as small as a half inch has a big effect in the way your outfit comes out to be in the end After making our darts on both sides, the front side of this outfit is looking perfect now. So we'll go straight to the fixing of our jogger band. Now for our jogger band, it varies. If you are fixing the jogger band for an adult, you use either four and a half or five inches, depending on how stretchy the jogger band fabric is. So this is a very stretchy jogger band fabric. So we'll be making use of five inches because this is for uh, adult with a very big foot. So I'll be marking 5 inches all through and I'll be cutting. That is after folding into two. Then I'll use this cut out jogger band to cut out the other jogger band. And after cutting, I'll be sewing by half inch. After sewing the jogger band, you turn it outwards, but you don't just turn it outwards like that. You open the seam allowance before you turn it outwards. So you see me opening the seam allowance and I do that because I don't want any rough foldings after turning it. So I'll do that for that leg and also do that for the other leg. I'll open the seam allowance, then I will bend from the center point like that. So that's just how to turn it after sewing. Then how to join it, you just make sure the sewing line of the jumpsuit is in alignment with the sewing line of the jogger band so that sewing line will be in alignment with the sewing line of the jumpsuit then you pin it down before sewing and when you are sewing you stretch the jogger band to be exactly the same size of the ankle line of the jumpsuit when you are sewing so you do that for the 
left leg and you also do that for the right leg make sure both swing lines are in alignment you pin down then you stretch the jogger band when you are joining both together and to make the sewing easy you turn it to the wrong face when you are sewing because it just makes the sewing go round 